Hello. Uh, yes, uh, thank you everybody for my presentation. My name is Chris. I'm from Hong Kong, working in private practice. Today, my present topic is neurogenic information in musculoskeletal condition. The presentation will be quite different, not based on clinical trial. I hope you don't mind. So, first of all, myself, I like information quite much because I can have clients' business and of course, inflammation can help us to repair the tissue. So what happened in the normal inflammation? When tissue get damaged, the free cell R1 start to release the histamine, neopeptide, and increase the vasodilation. Cause plasma comes in the injury area, and the white blood cell activate. Macrophytes start to engulf the foreign body. At the same time, the free love ending is stretched and irritated by the chemicals. That's why we feel the pain. Okay, after that, since the cutaneous nerve is stretched, signal sent to the central nervous system, and the central nervous system starts to regulate the motor, sympathetic, immune, endocrine system to promote the healing process. Signal sent back to the free nerve ending to release more inflammatory substance like substance P, neopeptide, look at the E. So I will describe the inflammation like the re-renovation process. When the house is getting all getting broken, we need to do the re-renovation. Of course the process is noisy, smelly, irritable, and annoying. But after that, you will get a new one, very nice one. So inflammation is good. So, what is inflammatory disorder? I would say the relationship between the nervous system and the immune system in this way. The nervous system detect, report, and instruct the immune system to do the inflammation, how to regulate the healing process. Okay, this is a very good relationship. However, how about either one of them get nuts? Okay, maybe disaster. It causes the neogenic inflammation or the immunogenic inflammation disorder. Okay, I will show you in a clinical example. So, neogenic inflammation. Okay, this concept is saying that the inflammation is initiated by the nervous system. The cutaneous nerve C fiber is more diameter and A delta are capable of detecting the chemical, mechanical, and the thermal change, and then send the signal to the brain to do the regulation. And they have the other function, and they can release the inflammatory neuropeptide to cause the blood capillary to do the vasodilation and release inflammatory substance, cause swelling, redness, increase in temperature, and pain, this neurogenic inflammation. So, how does it affect different parts of the body? By two mechanisms, this is called backfiring. Usually, the injury neuron sends the signal to the central nervous system through the dorsal root ganglia. However, this is not a unidirectional process. Sometimes, the signal sends back a lot of axon to the end of the free nerve ending and cause the Mediator released at the end of the distal part. Okay, this is called backfiring mechanism. Neogenic switching, firstly described in the medical condition, this means that when the inflammatory signal is created on the distal part, sent through the brain, and then the central nervous system reroute the signal to the other part of the body and cause the inflammation on the non-injury side. So take an example, think about the foot allergy. So you take the inflammatory substance to your GI tract. However, you get asthma, rashes, other part of the body. So how about in musculoskeletal condition, do we have this? I may suggest the compass regional pain syndrome may get through this mechanism. So uh, by this line, I I can help you to visualize the process. Okay, this normal inflammatory mechanism. Injury tissue, the new one. Okay, send the signal to the brain. At the same time, the free nerve 
free cell around start to do the inflammatory process together with the normal backfiring procedure. Okay, so neogenic inflammation and immunogenic inflammation happen together. This is the normal one. So how about the abnormal one? So by backfiring, the signal not only sent to the brain, but also transfer down to the axon, to the distal part. So when you hurt your thigh, you may get inflammation on your knee. Okay. Like this. Okay. How about the neogenic switching? Just a period slide. Okay. Injury part of neuron or inverted neuron. Okay. Send the signal to the brain and then we route the inflammatory impulse to the distal part, the other part of the body, and get the inflammation. So I would like to show this clinical example. This is the normal osteoarthritis knee. Both are 80 years old lady, and you can see the normal osteoarthritis. The swelling inflammation usually in the infrapatella region. Okay, you can get tenderness on the joint side, compassion pain, okay. And x-ray result is generally change. This is so for this neuritis. You can see the swelling mainly on the middle compartment of the knee. Because uh, clinically, you can find this case tenderness on the adductor, increased tension on pony band test, okay, and also local tenderness. Okay, so this the sophonous neuritis on the infrapatellar branch. So the physical treatment on this case, I would suggest we can do facial release modality, maybe acupuncture on the adductors to release the tension, mainly more hip control. So the because the adductor was used as a compensation of the poor hip control. Okay, and pony band neodynamic stretching. Other neogenic information, I will share this example. Rheumatoid arthritis and fibromyalgia are quite well known example of the neogenic inflammation, of course, together with the immunogenic. The migraine headache was found to be initiated by the irritation on the trigeminal nerve and caused vessel dilation to the dura method. So that's why when we treat the migraine headache, we do the cervical trigeminal nucleus release technique. Compressed regional syndrome mentioned before is due to the over activation on the central nervous system and cause the inflammation of the distal part can be caused by temperature, emotion. Very challenging for us. So, so, um, so this presentation I would like to bring out this message for chronic inflammation in the musculoskeletal condition, joint, tendon. It is necessary for us to check the possible involved neural structure, for example, the dermal tone, the pupil nerve. Okay, try to correlate this finding through the neurodynamic test, okay, spine palpation. Okay. And the treatment for the neogenic information should consider both on the nervous system and the immune system. Short presentation. And so uh, I didn't make the acknowledgement on this presentation, but I would like to give a big thanks to my inspiring tutor, David Butler, for teaching me the new matrix concept and the neogenic information one, and my colleague, George Zhao, for making this very reasonable PowerPoint for the presentation. Okay. So that's the, my presentation. Okay, any questions are welcome. System or brain system, uh, and so on. Uh, to have a um, automatic nerve system, how to treat uh, uh, by clinician? How to treat? Sorry, I missed the last. 
uh, for example, uh, brace, deep brace, or uh, how to treat the immune system? Mm. Oh. Yes, okay, I'll prepare one slide. Okay, if I say physiotherapy for the immune system, just ask the patient to do the exercise, it's easy. I hope so. But we have a lot of work to do. For the immune system, it's related to a lot of factors. For example, about the stretch, the story of the cortisone, because of the stretch, the cortisone released in the central nervous system, it subscribes the work in the immune system and cause more inflammation and tense up of the muscle tension. And what we need to deal with that, we need happy hormone, right? We can do counseling, okay? We can suggest to the patient to eat more banana, a lot of serotonin. That's why uh, we eat more banana and chocolate milk, okay? So, sleeping is a very important factor because the parasympathetic nervous system works well only in the deep sleeping. If the patient has a is stoma at night, or all the progress will not be good. Okay. And environment, okay, and research so that the humidity environment caused the more flare up in the rheumatoid arthritis condition, maybe due to the atmosphere pressure, uh, humidity, the chemical concentration inside the body. So I would suggest my patient to do more exercise to maintain high metabolism of the body and keep the environment stable. Okay, uh, therapeutic education to cognitive training and the uh, greater motor imagery program is something on the central nervous system proposed by the mostly. It worked very well. Okay, exercise of course and manual therapy. I, I, I will emphasize the manual therapy do, do something mobilization on the forensic spine because forensic spine is very important for the parasympathetic nervous system to control the autonomic system which we highly relate to the immune system. Uh, I I have a uh, CRPS type one for uh, five years. Uh, she ha uh, she is uh, twenty three years old, and uh, the uh, uh, I uh, how to how, what to, what treatment is the better? Do you think? <laughs> so you have twenty twenty years old patient with what condition? Uh, um, how about exercise or uh, sleep or uh, advice? What is better? Exercise or what advice? Kind of what? That ah, yeah. Uh, uh, Bill uh, tie. Uh, no, don't touch. Free uh, tie. Knee flexion, uh, 19 degree for four, five years. And ankle dorsal flexion is minus uh, 20 degree. So it's more no, thin time. So it's the chronic pain condition. So chronic pain condition, I, I would suggest not only the musculoskeletal condition, it's maybe she suffers from central standardization stir up in the central nervous system as well. Beside the conventional treatment, traditional treatment of physiotherapy, we also need to do some education, uh, cognitive education, counseling, counseling, and also you, you can suggest the great motor imagery program which consists of naturality training and mirror therapy because all the, for chronic pain, all the pain is not only on the body but inside the brain. Okay, it's so some kind of psycho, bio, psycho, social issue. So that's I, my suggestion. Thank you. Get up. As an old uh, physiotherapist myself, you know, we learned uh, inflammation a long time ago. And neurogenic inflammation come around maybe in the uh, you know, 90s. Yeah. And I always confused whether this patient in front of me, whether he just have uh, inflammation or he has uh, neurogenic inflammation. I mean, are they the same term, same thing, or they are different? Well, this is a very good question. I'm afraid today I, I don't have a very firm answer on this, but I try my best. Uh, neogenic inflammation and immunogenic inflammation comes together, but they are not clinically identical. So because of the nervous system is instructing 
the immune system to start the inflammation. How to do the differentiation? Mm, I think they both exist together, but I would like to do the differentiation whether is the inflammation is originated from the local part or other referral sources. For example, if it's due to the peripheral nervous system, I may do the neurotension test, neurodynamic, how patient on the nervous, nervous structure. Okay, it's due to the central nervous system. I will do much more to screen the yellow flag. Okay, environment and <coughs> central nervous system may be something related to the medical, like the rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, we need to uh, see whether doctor did the blood test or whatever any genetic problem. So differentiation, I think, is so difficult to confirm that because it's related to a lot of factors. Yeah. But, both the beautiful structure and the nervous system. Okay, let me ask you this question. If the patient hurt, can I say the pain itself can set up inflammation, uh, neurogenic inflammation? Uh, yes. Pain itself. Just pain. the pain itself cause neurogenic inflammation. Pain itself cause the neurogenic inflammation? Mm. Sorry, I cannot tell uh, because uh, here, because as I mentioned that no cutaneous nerve detect the irritation may already trigger the neogenic inflammation by releasing the neopeptide to the capillary. When and how <coughs> this mechanism initiate uh, at that moment, I don't have um, previous studies to explain that. You know, uh, in the in the very early, maybe in the thirty or forty, there are doctors trying to. Uh, treat the, uh, the, the soft tissue injury, like blocking the pain. They just simply block the pain by the injecting, you know? Exactly. To block the pain and uh, see if that will help uh, the process. So if the pain is caused, if the pain can cause uh, neurogenic inflammation, by simply blocking the pain, you can take away the neurogenic part. Well, I'm just throwing out a question, you know, see how you think That's about okay. it. Yeah, I would like to explain it to this slide. So, so it's here, the irritation and pain, cause the pain. Okay, so we block here. Okay, so, so uh, Because I just say, not that easy, because the central nervous system can itself can generate the pain to all the pain happen here, even without the input from the peripheral part, we can also feel the pain because it's inside our brain. Sorry, there we have.